Hello, all you R programming enthusiasts. My name is Greg Martin. Welcome back to R Programming 101. Today, we're going to be talking about how to explore your data before you do anything with your data. You need to understand the data. You need to understand the parameters, dimensions of your data, how big that data set is, that data frame. You need to understand how many variables you've got, and you need to understand the characteristics of those variables before you do anything else, right? Super duper important and super duper easy, right? So don't go away. Let's do this together. If you want to learn about R programming, then you have come to the right place. On this YouTube channel, we're creating R programming videos on everything. Now, the first thing I'm going to say is this. I use the functions and the packages within the tidyverse. You can watch one of my other videos about why the tidyverse is so important, but I really think that you should get into it if you aren't already. You say install tidyverse, it's on your computer for good, then every time you use are say library tidyverse and it calls and brings onto your computer all of the functions and capabilities and increased vocabulary that come with the packages in the tidyverse. And I'll point out some of them as we go along. Next, importantly, R comes built within it a whole lot of data sets that you can use to practice your analysis, right? This is very important. So if I put, put command enter over that data, open close brackets, these are all the data sets that exist within R. Now, importantly, some of the data sets, like these ones here, all of these data sets at the bottom, the ones coming with ggplot, these are data sets that are that get additional data sets that come once you've installed the tidyverse. And we're going to be using one of those additional data sets in the analysis today called Star Wars. The nice thing about Star Wars, it's a little bit messy. So we get there's some missing data. There's all sorts of problems with it. So it's a lovely example of how to explore and clean our data. Right now, with anything in R, you can always put a question mark and then either the function or in this case, the data set. If you push command enter down on the bottom on the right and to help, you're going to see some information about that data frame. And we can see that it tells us about the various variables that we've got here. I'm not going to get too much into that at the moment, but that's a useful thing to remember. First command, first function we're going to learn about today is dim, D-I-M, and that's dimension. So if we push command enter there, it's just telling us two things. Firstly, it's telling us that there are 87 rows or observations and that there are 13 variables in this particular data frame. Okay, useful. That gives us a first glimpse as to what's happening here. Next, a very common function that's used to understand the structure of a data frame is STR, which stands for structure, for structure, Star Wars. Now, here we run into a problem, and I'll illustrate that right now. Command Enter, and look at all of this. Oh, this is very messy. I mean, we've got all of these long spaces here, and if you scroll all the way back up to the very top, we start seeing what we'd expect in a structure, and these are your variable names and the type of variable in the next column over there, and then the first few instances of that variable on the right-hand side of that. The reason why we've got all of this weirdness down here is because these are actually lists, and I'll point out what that means in just a minute, but some variables, each of the observations within that variable isn't one little data point, but it's in of itself actually a list and could be anything. It could be a, a, like a variable of itself. It could be an entire data frame. There's a whole lot of things. So it gets a little bit messy, right? So I find the STR function, it gets a bit messy, but if you use the glimpse function, right? It's the same kind of thing. But if we say glimpse, now glimpse comes with the tidyverse, by the way, and we push command enter now, it's much neater, right? It starts off by saying observations 87. So we got this information from our dim function, variables 13. Then it lists the variables quite nicely. Da, 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 da. Tells you what kind of variable it is in the next column. By the way, integer is, you know, numbers one, two, three, four, five. It doesn't have uh, anything in between. Double over there, DBL, is actually uh, synonymous with numeric. And again, that could be any fraction in between integers 72.4, et cetera, et cetera. Here we've got character chr we don't have any factors in here factor is really just a categorical variable but r manages for the most part character variables in the same way that it would factors the difference is factors sometimes have levels right especially an ordinal factor so small bigger biggest there's an actual order to that there's certain levels to it that can be important in certain analysis and you'll notice in this data set there aren't any of those here we've got three variables that are lists right so in this data set, we've got all the characters in the Star Wars universe. So we've got Luke Skywalker. And then Luke Skywalker, in the film's variable, it's going to list 
all of the movies that Luke Skywalker was in. Right, and that'll make a little bit more sense in a second when we have a look at the data set. The next thing you can put in here, I haven't got it there, but you can put in view with a capital V, Star Wars. And that's gonna bring up the data set here so we can actually see it. And it's quite nice and neat in this particular view. And you can scroll to the right. And, and can you see here, right, Luke Skywalker, with that observation or that row, all of the characteristics of Luke Skywalker, height, mass, hair color, skin color, these are all the variables. This, by the way, is what we call a sort of a neat and tidy format where your columns are your variables and your rows are your observations, right? So Luke Skywalker, height 172, and I think this is in centimeters, et cetera, et cetera, eye color blue. And so each of these parameters, gender, male, you can see it's just one data point there. Gender of Luke Skywalker is equal to male. But as soon as we get to films, he's in more than one film, and that's why this is a list, right? And that's why when we did STR, it was a little bit messy. Same with the vehicles that he uses, starships, etc. cetera, All right? Kind of a nice data set. You'll notice that there's a couple of NAs, which stands for not available, or that's missing data, and that's gonna be useful. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. Right, so that's our Star Wars data set. The next thing we can do, which I haven't got here, is you can do head, Star Wars, okay, and that's gonna give you the first six rows. If you just wanna have a quick look at that, and you can also say, this, do the same thing, tail, Star Wars. It's gonna give you the last six rows. That can be useful at times, especially if, you, if you're dealing with a very big data set and you kinda of wanna know what's happening on either side of that. Now, usually in R, and it's actually kinda of good practice, if you wanna look at a particular variable, you would say Star Wars, and then you might say, dollar sign, name, and that's gonna give you that particular vector. If you say attach Star Wars, when you're using the Star Wars data set in, uh, in other functions, you don't have to be saying Star Wars the whole time. You can simply put in the name of the variable. It's a little bit lazy. It's probably not best practice, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just gonna do that. It just makes it look a bit neater. So I'm gonna say attach Star Wars. So Star Wars has been attached. Now, the next function that I want to teach you is the names function. So if you put names, Star Wars, it's gonna give you the names of all the variables. That's a useful thing to do right off the bat. Know, know what variables you've got, know what you've got in there. Also look at the names. It becomes important because you can see what's useful here is they're all just one word. So skin underscore color. That's kind of useful at times just to know that there's no gaps in between letters within the variable names. It's not the end of the world if there are gaps, but it's useful to know because as you write your code, that can be important. The other nice thing about being able to say names Star Wars is whenever you make reference to one of your variables in your code, what I do, which is kind of a good idea, is type in names and then just cut and paste the name of the variable into your code instead of typing it. You don't have to always do that, and if it's simple, that's fine, you don't have to, but the point is, when your code goes wrong, when things fall apart, very often, it's just a typo. You've typed in the name of a variable incorrectly, and you can circumvent that problem by just cutting and pasting the names of the variable. In this case, these are all nice and simple and small, but sometimes variable names can get a little bit messy, and it's, and it's useful to be able to call up the names of your variables. And sometimes you think when you're thinking about your analysis, you wanna remember what variables are there, what's in there, I can't remember. Names, data frame, bam, that's the list of the variables that you've got. Excellent. The next thing that we've got is length, Star Wars, and that's just gonna tell us Again, we've already got the dimensions. We've said that there's 13, that there's 13 variables length. It's just telling us that again. Incident, and then let's start looking at specific variables. So I wanna look at hair color. That's one of hair color, there it is. Hair color is one of our variables. And if I say class hair color, it's gonna tell us that this variable is a character variable. Okay, that's interesting, that's a character variable. You might have expected it to be a factor. And when we do our data cleaning, we might want to change it to a factor. It depends on what you're gonna be doing with the analysis, but the point is you've got that option. At the moment, it's just seeing this as you know, a string of characters. There's no levels to it and nothing more has been done with it. Okay, so it's kind of quite simple. So that is class. You can put in behind class here, you can stick in any of the variable names. It's gonna give you that. We also saw what the class of this variable was earlier when we did glimpse. Okay, it told us that it was a character, but just so that you know you can do that there. You can also, behind class, you can actually put in the name of the data set itself. You could have put Star Wars in here, and it would say that this is a data frame. Uh, keeping in mind, not everything in R is a data frame, right? There are other types of data. 
and I'm not going to get into that today. Length. Now, remember when we said length and we put in Star Wars, it said that we, there were 13 variables. When we say length and we put in a variable name, right, command enter, it's going to tell us the number of observations or the number of rows. Okay, so just remember that. Then, now this is lovely, unique. Unique hair color is going to tell us all of the unique values that sit within that variable. So if we go into Star Wars here and we went to hair color, you can see it's got blonde, none, brown, brown, gray, brown, ba 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 ba. If we want to know what are the uh, possible values that, that exist within this variable, you put in unique and we can see that this is the collection of possible values that can sit there. Now, the reason this is important to look at is firstly, there's NA, so we know that there are some missing values. Very useful to know, and we're gonna talk a little bit about missing values in just a second. And this is where it becomes important to understand your data, understand how it was collected, understand the nature and qualitatively, what is this variable? Because we've got something that says none here, and we've got something that says unknown there. And the temptation would just be to sort of say, well, missing and none and unknown, it's all kind of the same thing, and we're just gonna delete all of those rows and be done with it. And it might be, depending on the kind of analysis you're wanting to do, that might be the right thing to do. You might wanna say, well, we just want to analyze hair color where the, the character actually has hair and we know what the hair color is. Otherwise, we're not interested and we discard everything else, fine. But keeping in mind these three things, NA and none and unknown, mean different things and that might be important in terms of the way you analyze your data. NA means the data is missing, it wasn't collected, we don't know anything about it. This, that character may have hair, that hair may have a color, but it's just missing, we haven't got that information. None might mean, I mean I didn't collect this data, but you'd be interested in, does none mean there is hair but it has no color? Or there is no hair? And unknown means we don't know. It's not that the data wasn't collected. Maybe it is not possible to know the color of this hair because the character always wears a hat. So we're not saying it doesn't have hair. We're not saying we didn't collect data on that data point. We're saying with respect to hair color, we don't know what the hair color is. Those three kinds of observations mean different things and it may be important in the way you analyze your data. So look at and understand the different parameters in your data. Right, now, this next line of code up here, view, sort, blah, 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 this is all kind of quite long, that might be difficult to understand, and I'm gonna build that line of code up one step at a time so you can understand how I got there. Let's start off with the middle part here. If we said table, hair color, right, R would produce, because there's a lot of variables, it doesn't look much like a table, but basically, against each of these possible values, it counts up how many observations in the data set have that value, right? So we can see that brown has got 18, black, there's 13 characters with black hair, there's four characters with white hair. So this doesn't look like a table just because it's all squashed in there, but literally this would be a little table, right? Now, let's say we wanted to sort that table from biggest to smallest. Well, firstly, if we wanted to sort it, we could type in sort, open brackets and close brackets. In other words, we, we our starting point is we wanna, let me just show you how this works just in case you're not familiar with this, we wanna sort something, so sort is the function, and inside the brackets you put the argument, which is what is it that you're trying to sort? Well, we're trying to sort that table, right? Table, hair color. And now it's sorted it from smallest to largest. We might wanna add an additional argument. I'm just gonna cut and paste the correct spelling. So decreasing equals true, right? And now you can see it's sorted it, and it started the largest number going down, 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 down to the smallest numbers. And then the final step is um, you can say view with a capital V and wrap all of that becomes the argument with N view, what is it that we're viewing? And the reason that's nice is it pops it on into this view, which is much easier to look at, I find. I mean, this is, you know, um, this just, when you're exploring your dot, you wanna get a mental sense of what's going on here. This is easier to look at and we can see, okay, we've got none, brown, ba 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 ba. Okay, now we can do the exact, if we remove view, and instead we put a bar plot, which is, and we put that exact same code in there. Okay, I'll show you what I mean. If I change the word view, and I typed in bar plot, it would draw a bar plot 
from smaller to larger. You can't see all of the labels just because this is squished in a little bit here, but you can see how that can be useful just to get a sense of what's going on. Remember, we're not doing any analysis now. We're trying to get a mental picture of what's going on with our data. Okay, that is looking at, in this case, a categorical. Well, in this case, the variable is a character variable, but everything I've done for this character variable, you would also do with a factor or a what we call a categorical variable. So if this wasn't categorized as a character variable, if it was a factor, everything that I've done here would still apply. Oh, hang on, hold the phone. Before we do a numeric variable, what I did here with view, okay, to, to get there, to get there. I just wanna quickly show you how to get there using tidyverse sort of notation, because I think working with the tidyverse, and in this case, dplyr and the pipe operator is much more intuitive. You see up here, it's kind of hair color wrapped in table, wrapped in sort, wrapped in view. This is the way coding was always done using base R. Originally, this has how R coding was done. It's important to understand that because when you work in R, you have to collaborate with other people. You've got to be able to read different kinds of code and you need to understand how that kind of wrapping process works. But we've all moved on. We're now working in the tidyverse and now we've got what's called the pipe operator, which means we can say, let's start with Star Wars and pipe it in to a function called select. So we select hair color. So now it's just selecting the hair color variable. And I'll show you as I go along, I'll delete that and I'll say, let's just run that bit of code there. And it's got Star Wars and it's selected just hair color, right? The pipe operator again, which basically means, and then we want to count. So it will uh, run that code. And now it's created an additional column N, which is the number, and it's created a count for each of those possible characteristics. It's got to count how many times those observations appeared in the data frame. And then we can arrange them a range in descending order. If you just put a range, it would do it in ascending order. And if you want it to be descending, you've got to actually say so. And then remember the pipe operator literally just means and then the next thing you do is view. So can you see how this is much easier to read and understand and change and work with than what's up there again. And ultimately what you get is the same thing, right? So we, we're looking at the same kind of, the, the difference is the NA is in there and when we did it up here, the NA did not appear. Okay, and if you wanted to remove the NA, you could, and we'll get, we'll get into that when we start talking about cleaning data. Right, let's quickly talk about missing values as well, because part of exploring this data, part of understanding the data is saying what is missing. It's tremendously important. And you need to be able to look at the data and understand not only what's missing, but if you can figure out figure out why it's missing. It matters. The reason is if the data is missing because it's randomly missing. In other words, you know, there's no systematic bias built into the way the data was collected. It's just a random fact of the matter that you don't have all of the data points. That's one thing. If the missing data is specifically connected to uh, some sort of systematic bias, that's very important, especially when you start analyzing your data. In other words, and it affects the extent to which you want to remove uh, the missing values or, or whether you want to keep them in there. So, and we're gonna talk about that when we talk about analysis, but certainly you want to understand what's missing. There are very sophisticated ways of visualizing missing data. And I'm not gonna get into that too much in this video. I'll make another vi video that's specifically about missing values. But a very quick and easy way to understand what's missing with respect to a particular variable. And by the way, what I'm talking about, when I'm showing you here, you really need to do this for each variable, create a little uh, sense for each variable, what's going on before you start analyzing your data. And it's worth it, it'll save you time. Again, we've got view. Okay, and we'll come back. We'll stick the view in right at the end, right? Because, uh, well, why don't, why don't I build this up again so you can sort of see how I got there. If we take the, the Star Wars data set, right? Remember that if you put in square brackets and there's a comma in the middle there, right? What goes before the comma are the rows that you want to select. And what goes in after the comma are the, are the variables or the columns that you want to select. If you leave either of these blank, it'll just select either all of the rows, all of the columns. If we put in some argument over here between the square bracket and the comma, that will tell R to select certain rows. Does that make sense? And we can use this text right here, is NA 
hair color. Where this is true, select that row in the selection process. If I just put in is in a hair color, R produces a vector, which is literally false, true, true, false, 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 ba, 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 ba. And each of these trues and falses is with respect to each row or observation of the data. And we're saying to R, look at this vector, trues and falses, and extract out just the rows where that is true. And if we leave this blank, it's gonna use all of the variables, all of the columns will be included. So if I push enter now, you'll see it's selected all of the variables and it's just selected five rows. In other words, these are the five rows where it is true that hair color is missing, right? And if in front of this, if in front of that I typed in view and I wrapped this whole thing around view, we would see that up here, which is easier to look at. And these are the five rows of data where hair color is missing. And you can say, well, what is, is there anything about the observations or the rows where hair color is missing? Is there anything peculiar about them? We can look at the other variables. Are they all associated with the same skin color? Well, no, not really. They all have the same eye color. No, not really. Oh, they're all born in the same year. We don't see a pattern there. You're looking for a pattern. You might, oh, you might say, hang on, hold the phone. A lot of them are droids. Can you see how once you've extracted out those where there is a missing value, you can start looking for whether that missingness is associated with something else. And there are more sophisticated ways that you can look for those associations. But at this point, I'm just saying eyeball it, get a sense of it, get, get, get an understanding of what's happening with your data in as much as you can. That intuitive understanding, it's, it's really important. Okay, that's missing data. We've still been dealing with a factor. The next thing in our Star Wars data set, what about if we were dealing with a numeric variable? Right, so here we've got height. Okay, let's, and we wanna look at that. Again, we can say class, height, it's an integer. Okay, length, it's gonna say that there's 87 observations, fair enough. Now, what's quite nice is you can say summary, height, and it's gonna provide you with the minimum, the maximum, which is the range, the interquartile range, which you know 25% of the data sits between the minimum and the first quarter, another 25% between the first quartile and the median, the median is the middle value, another 25% between the median and the third quartile and another 25% there, the mean is of course the average, right? So it gives you all of this. You could use any one of these as an actual function. Right, so you could put min, you know, height, and it would give you that value. But just doing summary is nice. It pops it all out. It also tells you how many missing values there were. So that's kind of quite useful. A nice quick way of getting it. But the other thing about this, it doesn't tell you about the shape of the data. You get a sense of it because the median and the mean aren't quite exactly the same, but they're close enough. What we might want to do is do a box plot, right? And uh, here, when you do a box plot, the big thick line is the median, the central value divides the data in half, half of the data is above it, half of the data is beneath it. The box itself is the interquartile range. 50% of the data sits within there. So if half of the data sits in this, in this narrow spectrum, you can see then we've got quite a wide range and there's a lot of outliers. Then the whiskers go up to 1.5, the interquartile range. So this is the interquartile range, 1.5 times the interquartile range gives us the end of ed edges of the whiskers, and then everything outside of the whiskers we refer to as outliers. So that's a box plot, kind of useful also to get a sense of the shape of the data, but we might wanna complement that with a histogram. Histogram takes all of the values and puts them into bins and then counts up the number of observations in a particular bin, right? So we can also get a sense of the shape of our, our value because this is a numeric variable, we're interested in whether or not this is a normally distributed variable, if the, if the distribution is normal, and we'll talk about what we mean by normal in other videos, but the point is, for a lot of st statistical analysis, one of the conditions of, of applying a particular statistical function to a numeric variable is that the distribution is normal. If that's not the case, there are ways around that. There's other things you can do. Uh, there's non-parametric tests that you can do, but for the, for the sake of 
this video, this video is about how to explore your data, how to get that sense of what's inside your data set. Look, I haven't covered absolutely everything, but I hope that this was at least a good start. The two major kinds of variables that you're gonna deal with are categorical variables and numeric variables. And we've covered more or less how to look at each of these and get a sense of them. And uh, that's definitely the first step to your analysis. The next thing that we're gonna talk about in, in, in another video is how to clean the data. That's perhaps a more extensive, that might be more than one video. Anyway, listen, I hope you found this useful. Stay and watch another video. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Click on the like button. When you subscribe, click on the bell notification if you want notifications of future videos. Great to see you here. Don't do drugs, always do your best. Don't ever change. Speak to you soon. Take care. Bye.